uh, very good morning principal sir other dignitaries and uh, dear colleagues and beloved students i am uh, shobhan nandi coordinator of self driven activity group of uh, iic bit i heartily welcome mr chiranjeev mojumdar uh, chiranjeev mojumdar is a senior technical specialist from ibm and we are very honored uh, to have you as our today's guest speaker of this technical session and we the faculty members and uh, students and the other audiences are eagerly waiting to hear about the concept of cloud computing from you so with the permission of principal sir i uh, request almaj to host the session now almaj over to you okay sir a very good morning to our respective principal sir professor dr nc ghosh our guest speakers all the faculty members and all the students present in this meeting as we know the ministry of human resource development mhrd government of india is making every possible effort to drive innovation and entrepreneurship to emerge as one of the focal points in our education system so taking part in this initiative institutions innovation council of bengal institute of technology in association with indian society for technical education that is ist students chapter of bit proudly presents a technical webinar on cloud computing benefits and trends thereby ilmas ekta from csc first year would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all in this wonderful technical interactive session now i proud proudly announce that our today's speaker is mr chiranjeev mazumdar senior technical specialist at ibm sir is here today to share his insights and acknowledge us with basics and latest developments of cloud computing now before starting the session i would like to uh, i would like all the participants to keep their microphones muted if you got any queries you can ask it at the end during the question answer series also this time bit has arranged a special award called star performer award a uh, few questions questions will be given in the feedback form at the end so the top 10 performers will be rewarded with this now i would like to request our principal sir professor dr nc ghosh to say a few words to commence today's session yeah uh, good morning to everybody uh, it's a uh, pleasure for me to be with you on a specific uh, topic which is, which uh, that i love uh, Uh, very much that is cloud computing uh, and uh, of course uh, the topic is cloud computing benefits and trends cloud comp so uh, for this specific talk we have a specialized person who is uh, uh, mr chiranjeev mojumdar from ibm so he will be talking about that because uh, the people who are working with ibm and also in the profession they are the best people to talk about uh, the new trends and also the benefits of this uh, particular tools so i i also heartily welcome mr chiranjeev mojumdar together with our iic institute innovation council president professor arpita chakraborty and her team is uh, also the shobhan nandi who is organizing this event particularly and uh, our uh, all other iic members who are organizing all these activities from time to time and these are actually bringing benefits to our students so today our actual uh, receiving and the students are there and there are 150 students uh, who is attending uh, this particular uh, top uh, lecture so students uh, you know miss uh, these are very specialized talk and our iic is organizing that so you try to take maximum benefit from all the experts will be talking about this because ultimately at the end of your undergraduate course you will have to be in the profession you will have to be in the market so the more you learn better you are uh, in in the market you know so uh, with these words i am not going to i am not an expert so i am not uh, going to talk about the cloud cloud computing the experts are there and our faculties are also there they will be talking uh, they will be discussing 
and uh, i have a specific request to uh, mr chiranbi uh, chiranjeev majumdar see uh, uh, if you can find some more people uh, to to deliver talk on other topic and help the institute uh, or uh, in general and the students in particular to this uh, uh, new knowledge about the new knowledge then it will be a really a great work done for the profession as well so uh, mr chiranjeev majumdar as a specific request to you uh, if you can suggest some name so our iac will take take it further forward so with these words so have a uh, nice uh, listening and try to learn more so i have got another commitment so i will not be able to listen the complete uh, lecture so please excuse me and uh, mr chiranjeev majumdar if you need any sorts of uh, information any sorts of uh, say say uh, 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 paper from the institute you can always uh, uh, be with us and keep a uh, 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 linking with the college itself it is uh, it, uh, bit will always be there with with all the speakers who who are contributing for the college itself particularly for the students so with these words i wish you all the best and i i thank my iac team for taking uh, such a nice topic for the student itself so thank you very much thank you sir for your kind words uh, now i would like to request our president of icbit professor arpita chakraborty ma'am to say something thank you almas a very good morning to all of you present over here let me welcome you all in today's technical webinar cloud computing uh, conducted by institutions innovation council bengal institute of technology as you know it's an uh, joint initiative by ministry of education and the ict in light of this we the bit people also we are arranging um, separate uh, seminars workshops uh, competitions throughout the year and we are to keep the records of these uh, events as a proof of the events um, as a record e repository also so just imagine if you are to store this huge amount of data in our own machine in our own laptop in desktop what a situation it would be difficult situation it it would be or suppose to check the email wherever we go we are to carry our own laptop or desktop how the burden some situation it would be it's really haunting for us so here comes someone who is offering its a virtual lending hand to us yes it's cloud um cloud computing is nothing but providing computing services over the internet and many more also servers uh, storage uh, se several analytic softwares etc so i wonder the service which is believed to have been invented in the years of 1960s and 70s is still having so much craze among the users and according to the t4 research this uh, job opportunity in this sector is increasing day by day so it's an opportunity for us to learn this subject from our industry expert mr chiranjeev majumdar and without delaying further i would like to uh, <clears throat> inaugurate this session and hope this will be a huge success and student we are expecting your patience hearing thank you thank you ma'am now i would like to uh, request my co-host dipita pradhan from csc to introduce our guest speaker thank you almas thank you almas it's my great pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for today mr chiranjit mojumdar sir is presently associated with ibm as a data lake architect he has been employed with ibm since 2006 and in this 16 years in ibm he was designated as associate project manager technical lead it business analysis micro strategy administrator application consultant cloud consultant and in june 2020 he was designated as data lake architect he is a technical specialist and skilled in enterprise architecture microsoft azure agile methodologies data warehousing business intelligence business analysis 
data modeling, analytics, data migration, software development life cycle, SDLC, business requirements, data integration, software architecture, software development, front end development, cloud computing, micro strategy, administration, back end web development, and many more. He holds 71 certifications and 18 honors. He has also worked in nine major projects. Till date, he is associated with three organizations, the Data Science Association, the Digital Analytics Association, and the International Institute of Business Analysis. It is indeed a wonderful opportunity to have Sir today amongst us. Now, I would like to hand over to Mr. Chiranjit Mojumdar, Sir. Over to you, Sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, first of all, for the warm welcome. And thank you so much, Principal Sir, and all the faculty members for inviting me over here. I hope I am audible loud and clear, right? Yes. Can yes. I get a quick thumbs up or a yes from everyone, please, on the chat? Yes, yes, yes. yes. yes sir. You are clearly audible. Thank you so much. All right, so I'll start my presentation on cloud computing and I would like to know the audience profile first of all. So do we have students from all years or can we, ju can we just have a, a quick, uh, you know, on the chat, just mention your year and type it. Let me take a look. First year, fourth year, okay, good, 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 good. Okay, awesome. So we have a kind of representation from every year, which is great. And I'm so happy to be amongst all of you. You know, I, I ended my college uh, 16 years back. And, uh, you know, it's always good. It always feels good to be among the students. So without much ado, let me get started. Um, and let me see if I can move the slides. Yeah, so this is what we have in the agenda today. Um, introduction part is already completed, I believe. Thank you so much. Um, we would be discussing about what is cloud computing, benefits of the cloud, challenges of cloud migration, prominent cloud providers that we have, cloud deployment models, cloud service models. We'll be discussing a couple of industry cases. And most importantly for all of you, we would be discussing cloud career. What does cloud hold for all of you? Why are we having this session at all? What is the prospect that we have for tomorrow, right? So we'll be discussing all of that. And at the end, I will also answer any questions that you might have and will be an open forum. I'll try to give that forum for the last 15 minutes uh, provided I have the time for that, all right? So let's get started. So I have already been introduced. This is just a slide. I have done a few certifications in, in Microsoft as well, including the TOGAF. Um, and let me start with cloud computing. So let me ask you all, before I go to the Microsoft definition, okay? Before, let me ask you all, uh, Professor Chakrabarti, uh, she provided a very nice, you know, idea about cloud, right? I mean, if we have to store all these recordings, where do we store it? I mean, it's a finite storage in our computer. How many, how much storage do we have? 40 GB in, in our old days. Today, probably it's 500 GB, one terabyte, two terabyte, that's all. But what if we need more than that? Where do we store it? That's a very small use case, right? But the use case for cloud is actually humongous. I mean, uh, storing data in the cloud is just one part of it, right? So I would like to understand from you, first of all, I'll give it like, you know, two minutes, right? Two minutes to everyone, whoever can type fastest fingers first, just type in the chat, what do you understand by cloud? Quickly, let me see some responses here. Let me get an idea of what you all know about it. Let's in quick access to save data to store something. Okay. Virtual data storage, data storage online. Okay. Lots of storage, data store, store data, data storage. Yeah, data storage is fine. I mean, that's that's absolutely fine. Uh, okay. 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 All right. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Mm, okay. 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 Virtual machine or remote location, okay. Okay, quick access, okay. 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 Okay, all right. So that's that's enough, that's enough. Let me move ahead with the presentation and then we will see what cloud computing is all about, right? Uh, I'll just minimize this chat window for now. And I hope the screen works. 
So this is the Microsoft definition. I have not put any words of mine here. It's directly from Microsoft. What does Microsoft say? What is cloud computing? Okay. And the simple thing is we are working the data that we are storing here. We are not keeping it with us. It is just someone else's machine, right? That's the simplest de definition that we can think of. But it's not as simple as we speak. It's not a one word answer. It includes uh, a complicated way of computing services that includes servers, that includes storage, databases, networking, software, analytics, intelligence. And in today's world, we have data science, we have artificial intelligence and all of that, that allows you to, that allows you for faster innovation and economies of scale. So for example, I'll give you a, a quick idea, right? Uh, you, we all know about um, uh, the sale that happens, the church sale, for example, right? Or the Christmas sale or the Durga Puja sale, right? Suppose I am a retail, suppose I am a retail business, okay? I have a website, right? And in my website, I usually have a footfall of around say 50 people per day. I'm just telling you just an idea, right? Now, it so happens that during puja, lots of people are shopping, right? Online shopping is a craze these days and with COVID and all, you know, online shopping is the in thing. So what happens is suddenly the footfall increases from 50 to 500. But I had not factored that in. I had taken a very basic uh, kind of web service. I had not factored that in. And what happens is with the sudden increase in traffic, the site basically crashes, right? The site crashes and then I'm kind of wondering what happened? Why did the site crash? Simple, because it was not able to scale. So that, there comes economies of scale. So what cloud does along with all of the other things, storage and et cetera, et cetera, and blah, blah. It also allows this elasticity of scale and we'll come more into that when we discuss about the benefits, right? So let me move on, let me move on. And then you can jot down all your questions for now. I'll take it all at the end, don't worry or whatever I cannot take, maybe I can answer them later. So here are the benefits of cloud, right? The first benefit that we have is cost, the CapEx. What do you understand by CapEx? CapEx is capital expenditure. In the old days, when we had, you know, service in monolithic stacks, at that point in time, what we used to, what we needed was there would be hardware, hardware engineers, there would be, you know, big hardware and the servers, that would need to be installed, deployed, the network needs to be configured. It would take a long time. So if I if I am a big business, if I am say uh, a big business, uh, say a pharmaceutical industry, right? And I have I need to have IT at the back end of my business. What I would need to do is I would need to you know uh, call all these IT guys, and they would come, they would give an estimate, and then they would take a lot of time to set the hardware up, right? Hardware installation was a big thing in those days. Now with cloud, what happens is this CapEx is eliminated, right? You can do deployments with just a click. You can, suppose I want to spin up a, a Windows machine somewhere, a Windows virtual machine. I can just do some clicks and then it will be up in like two or three minutes. Imagine that in earlier days, that would not be possible. The other thing that I was mentioning was elasticity, right? like the Christmas sale or like the Durga Pujo sale, right? Now the sale would not happen those days. Now, now the website would not be able to accommodate this additional traffic those days. But what happens with elasticity is we have ways to scale the cloud resources. We can set up auto scale. So whenever uh, the traffic is higher, the backend service automatically, it expands its capacity, it increases its nodes, right? And it's able to automatically accommodate the additional requests. And when say the usage is low, they automatically scales down, so it removes the nodes. And we only pay for what we are consuming. We are not paying for anything extra. We do not need to you know, purchase big hardware and just to you know, keep it with us. We don't know when we would need it. Maybe we, are, we would need it just for two months, but we are still paying for it for 12 months. That's not the case anymore. We are paying for only what we need. And then comes the performance, the speed, the productivity, the reliability, the security, and all of that. I'm not saying these benefits are not there earlier. These benefits were there earlier as well. But with cloud, things have changed a lot. And we will look more into it when we discuss the use cases. The challenges, however, we do have some challenges for cloud migration. It's not a cake. So if you go to any big company today, any organization, any retail organization, 
take take any of the say take adani take reliance take tata everyone has an it part an it organization of their own which manages their website which manages the back end which manages their you know accounts and all of that and what happens when this you know old organizations they have their it is aging the hardware is aging right they have their old hardware stacks they have their own server rooms and all of that but at some point in time if say if a server was inducted in the 1970s or 80s it would already be very aging by now right and even if you change racks if you change the hard disk and all of that if you change the networking uh, uh, interferals even after that it may so happen that they are not able to accommodate the you know new traffic that's coming in right so what happens is cloud migration is a very in thing right now most of the organizations they are moving to cloud and but it's not easy so if you can see the small diagram that i have on the right hand side right there are many steps that are involved so there is a discovery phase that happens there's an assessment phase that happens there's a poc that happens what is poc poc is proof of concept before we do the actual thing we do a small replica a very small project just to see whether conceptually this would work because theoretically sometimes things look good but practically when you try to implement things fall apart right that's why we need to see whether it would work or not and that's why the poc comes and once the poc is successful then we kind of plan to move the applications and then we cloudify and we optimize right fine and it's it's an ongoing process it's not like we move to the cloud and then we are we are done it's not like that some amount of maintenance is still needed um but it's not as difficult as it used to be in in the earlier era so the challenges that we primarily have are number one the planning you need extensive planning to you know uh, see what would be migrated how would you would be migrating it there's a cost component although i say that the capex is eliminated but still the cloud migration itself it would cost some money time and resources although the although the short term and long, long term return on investment is very good actually so if we are migrating today uh, um, there would be a break even period where you know the it would be uh, the cost would be evening out the security and compliance have to be you know built properly because with uh, we'll come to the public clouds and private clouds and all of that uh, the business uh, downtime this is very important i have a running business right customers are logging into my website daily and i want to mig migrate to cloud how do i do it i need to minimize the downtime if my site is inaccessible for like two or three days then i lose business people are unable to order anything from my site right so what i need to do i need to minimize the business downtime so that even after i am migrating or even while i am migrating customers are able to log into my website or they are at least able to use some of the major functionality suppose ordering maybe they are not able maybe they would not be able to see all the product catalogs but they should able be able to still you know search for a product and order for it so all of these things need to be identified and then when we migrate at what point in time do we migrate it maybe a good point in time would be you know if it's an india based business maybe after you know the midnight hours when the traffic is usually very less to to my site maybe that's a good time and then the, there is the organization adoption, adoption and training requirements because what used to be earlier the technology is fast evolving so the adoption and training requirements would always be there whenever you you know adopt cloud and most importantly who is my migration business partner which organization am i partnering with to migrate my my on premises business so all of these uh, challenges are very much existent but it's not something that we cannot overcome organizations overcome these challenges regularly and with ease it's just that you know you need to have the right kind of resources to overcome these challenges and coming to cloud providers who are the major cloud providers so here i am sharing a gartner quadrant as of july 2021 where it talks about if you see here this is a very nice matrix maybe many of you are already familiar with this quadrant you may have seen it before so we have four quadrants we have leaders we have challenges we have niche players and we have visionaries right so the leaders at the moment and if i can move this slightly the leaders at the moment as identified by gartner as of the july 2021 are amazon web services 
Microsoft Azure and Google Cloud. These are the leaders identified. We have Alibaba Cloud in the visionary quadrant. And we do have some uh, niche players as well, like Oracle, like IBM, like Tencent. And this quadrants, this kind of change, you know, so Gartner publishes this quadrants on a regular basis. This gives an idea of where, uh, you know, each vendor is standing with respect to uh, their cloud, uh, um, cloud capabilities. Now, let me move to the next one and see. So this is very important, cloud deployment models. So how do we deploy? So we spoke about cloud migration, right? But then um, we do have a few options. How do you want to migrate cloud, migrate to cloud? So the, the, the three options that we have here, the first one is private cloud. The second one is public cloud. The third one is hybrid cloud. And each comes with its own set of pros and cons, with its own set of benefits, with its own set of challenges, right? So private cloud is, is good for any company which wishes to keep its data within its you know, own periphery. So it's very secure. It's like, um, it's like it's within the company boundaries itself. And, uh, and, and it's not shared. So what happens with public cloud is the cloud is kind of shared. So if I'm, I'm a cloud provider, I'm sharing my cloud with say four or more organizations, each having their own space. I do have security uh, and everything established. It's not like one company can access other companies' data. We, I do have all of those, but still it's not within my company premises, right? It's not like it's dedicated to my company only, okay? And then we have the hybrid cloud. What hybrid cloud does, hybrid cloud is kind of a mix. So hybrid cloud is probably the uh, most used of late because it provides several benefits. And we'll come to these benefits here. So the hybrid cloud benefits are, first of all, it provides the best of both worlds. I'm an old company, say. I'm a 70s business and I'm moving to cloud. I have some old hardware, which are still running and in good condition, but there are other parts which are not that good. So I need a mix of both. I cannot do away with this on-premises systems, but I also need to move to cloud. So there comes the hybrid cloud part. So it's uh, so I'm lever I'm connecting this uh, public cloud with my on-premises or my private cloud, and I'm kind of establishing a connection, and I'm using the best of both worlds, and that's very in because it it makes it easier for organizations to move to the cloud. Otherwise, uh, one cannot just you know stash all the all your hardware and on-premise systems one fine day, and uh, say and just say pack your bags and say that hey let's move to the cloud. It doesn't happen that way ever. So there is a gradual process that's very important to have. And the private cloud, as I already mentioned, it uh, since it's within the company premises, it's uh, it's less risky. You know, the cloud is dedicated to to your organization only. Uh, that cloud would not be shared with anyone else. So the risk factor is much less. And then sometimes there is data compliance. Sometimes there is you know, confidential data that a company, uh, you know, there should not be any data breaches. So any data breaches would lead to big uh, problems. So at that, in those, kind of, in those kind of scenarios, companies choose private cloud. And public cloud is the most uh, popular um, Public cloud provides, you know, easy, uh, cost-effective, easy deployments and on-demand scalability and all of that. Um, and there's zero maintenance, most of most importantly. So in private cloud or hybrid cloud, some amount of maintenance would be needed, which is more than what we need in public cloud. And and all of you probably have Google accounts, right? And Google Drive, which currently provides like 15 GB of free space. You're aware of it, right? That's yes. a classic example of that's a classic example of public cloud. Okay. And you may also be using Dropbox, many of you. Dropbox is also a classic example of public cloud. Okay. Hybrid cloud examples are many. I mean, I have noted down a few here for just so Northern and County, uh, but there are many more uh, organizations, almost, almost every organization out there, whoever is having a cloud strategy, 
they are going with hybrid cloud these days. Uh, that's how you know how in it is. And we also have some private cloud examples. We have uh, you know all of these cloud providers that are there in, in that I have mentioned above. They also provide uh, you know a private cloud support as well. But that's relevant to you know which organization wishes to go for it. Not everyone wishes to go for private cloud because it's usually uh, costlier also uh, than a uh, than a public cloud uh, scenario. Okay. Uh, now the other thing that I wanted to mention here is uh, this is also very important. You, uh, many of you may have studied uh, uh, it already in your uh, courseware, but this is this is an important. Uh, this is the service model. So we spoke about deployment model earlier, and here it is the service model. So the tra in traditional IT, the, the scenario that I was talking about earlier for on-premises systems, we managed everything from networking to storage, to servers, to virtualization, to operating system, to middleware, to runtime, to data, to applications, everything used to be managed by us. But that's not the case anymore. I mean, we have three service models that are specific to the cloud. And uh, I have some, someone is not on mute, I believe. I'm listening to a Bollywood tune. But anyway, uh, so uh, we have three service models. One is infrastructure as a service, we have platform as a service, and we have software as a service. And all these three service models are used by different clients today, depending on their requirement. So what is the difference between all of these three? Uh, there's a hand that has been raised. Abhishek Bakshi, what is your question? You can ask. Okay, never mind. We'll take the question answers at the end. Okay. So uh, for infrastructure as a service, uh, we we decide with the operating system and virtualization servers and storage and networking. All of this are already delivered. We don't need to worry about this. So all we need to do is you know, we need to just worry about uh, the applications, the data, the runtime, and the middleware. Okay, so we have to configure all of this. For platform as a service, we don't need to worry even about runtime or middleware. All of these are already there. All of these are managed by the cloud vendor. All we need to worry is about the application and the data. And for software as a service, we don't need to manage uh, worry about anything at all. The classic example of software as a service is Microsoft Office 365. Most of you may be using it already. It comes in a subscription model these days, right? So this is a classic software as a service. We don't need to worry about anything. It's all managed. You just need to go about your work. That's all. Everything else is managed. Okay. So that's a classic example of software as a service. Now, going back to the industry use case. Now, before I move to the industry use case, I would like to see if there are any questions. Let's see. Let's see. I'm looking at the chat here. Mm. Let's see if we have any questions because after the industry use case, uh, that would take some time for me, and then we would be discussing how the you know cloud career looks like, or what is in it for all of you. Are there any questions, please? Participants, if you have any questions, you can ask, sir. Sir, what is runtime in cloud computing, sir? Runtime in cloud computing. So uh, when we say MS Office 2021, I guess, sir, okay, okay. So when we say runtime, it's basically the amount of time that, uh, so there are separate, several definitions of runtime. The one that is relevant uh, for cloud, uh, because it depends on uh, the cost is estimated based on the usage. Whatever you use, the, only that part you pay. Right, so uh, the uh, so that is basically the runtime. So, for example, the period of time when when a particular function is running, for example, a lambda function or um, a function app in Azure. So, so that basically constitutes, uh, you know, that basically how we calculate the runtime. Which platform? Uh, if you used to do large, what do you mean by what platform? Sorry. I didn't understand this question. So this question was asked by Shomonil Das. Which platform is used if we want to do large computing? So uh, there are many choices actually. Um, if you are talking about big data computing, 
then uh, you know all of these cloud providers that I have mentioned here, Microsoft, Azure, uh, Google, you know, IBM, AWS, all of these provide you know capabilities for big data computing. If that is what you mean by large computing. How the cloud service companies manages so much of data? So at the back end, uh, the cloud companies also have data centers of their own. You know, there are availability zones that are there all over the world, and you can actually you know configure availability zones such that if one zone goes down, it pulls it, it the service is not down because we already have an availability zone con uh, configured and it it gets the service from another zone. So there are concepts of availability sets and availability zones and all of that. And uh, the data centers in, in itself, they have like uh, petabytes of storage, petabyte levels of storage. Imagine Facebook, the data center that Facebook has, imagine the amount of storage that it has, right? So those those hardwares are configured, by, and, but for users, those are not, you know, those are not view, viewable. Users cannot see what, what they have at the backend. How can cloud service provider ensure about data security in case of public cloud? In case of public cloud as well, there are ways to configure data security, right? You can configure how you want to authorize users. There are ways to authorize and authenticate, right? We have, uh, for, in, for Azure, for example, we have Azure Active Directory that, uh, that um, basically allows, we can, we can configure firewall, right? We can configure firewall. We can configure, uh, you know, application gateways. We can configure virtual networks. We can configure subnets. There are so many things that we can do from a security perspective, even if it's a public cloud. Okay, let me go to the industry use case first. Maybe uh, that will that will actually clear out some some of your doubts. Okay. And then we'll get back to the to the questions. I'll I'll try to answer as many questions as possible. Okay. So um, the industry use case that we wish to discuss here is this one, and this is uh, close to uh, a work that uh, I was involved in. Uh, a major pharmaceutical service provider. Uh, they traditionally kept all their data in on-premise systems. But uh, with the changing uh, needs of business, with, with the spikes of usage and all of that, with uh, you know, uh, rising customer base, aging hardware, uh, they decided to replace the on-premise systems and move all the data to the cloud. Okay? For cloud provider, they chose Microsoft Azure and they wanted to go to public cloud with the platform as a service, service model. Okay, we have already discussed what platform as services in, in the earlier slides. So uh, this is a typical data flow design that was created, that was created for this particular service provider. It's a simplistic design, which I kept simple uh, deliberately. I removed quite a few of the components because that would have complicated things. So on the left-hand side, you have the on-premises sources. Basically, the the data sources uh, from which this uh, legacy um, system used to get the information as well. And then what we decided to do, we decided to get the data into Azure Data Lake via one of the Azure services that is, that is you know, designed to uh, intake large amounts of data. And in the data lake, what we did, we segregated three zones. We created a raw zone, we created a staging zone, we created a refined zone. What is the purpose? In the raw zone, we would take the data as is without any transformation whatsoever, without any business logic whatsoever. From the raw zone to the stage zone, we would start to uh, implement some of the business logic in the ways uh, we were handling the incoming data, right? But from the stage to refined zone, we decided to keep only what we need, nothing more than that, nothing less than that, okay? 
and this we did for all the on-premises sources, whatever sources were there. And once we did it, we um, we allowed the data to be seen through the serving layer. What is the serving layer? So in the serving layer, we had Databricks as a service. So Databricks uh, for Azure uh, is a service that allows you to uh, to uh, query the data source from uh, diverse source systems. But here we, you know, used Azure Data Lake as a source, and then you could actually query the data. You could uh, using various languages. So Databricks actually supports multiple languages. You can use uh, SQL. You can use Scala. You can use Python. Uh, you can use uh, uh, other languages as well, and uh, you can actually query the data. You can query the data. You can uh, 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 drive analytics via Databricks. And we also, what we did was we also uh, exposed the data from Refined Zone to Power BI. What is Power BI? Power BI is a reporting technology from Microsoft uh, that that has uh, been in place for quite a few years now. And with Power BI, what happens is it it it, uh, it allows you to uh, drive business intelligence insights from the data. So the benefit of having uh, analytics with Power BI is uh, no matter how much data you have in the source, uh, you can actually model the data, you can uh, aggregate the data, you can uh, create formula, you can uh, create KPIs, you can create measures that would allow you to drive insights. So for example, if today I have say 2 million rows uh, in a particular record in a particular record set, I do not understand much about the data unless I am a very you know business savvy person. I would not be able to understand uh, by looking at 2 million rows what is going on. I would not be able to get any trend. I would not be able to understand what it's what the data is all about. Maybe I would just see a few columns. Maybe I would see the profit column. Maybe I would see that okay, uh, there are 2 million records. Uh, but I but even after I have all the details, it would be difficult to draw an insight. But that changes. But that changes when we have the analytics with Power BI. So with with Power BI, we can actually get the data in. We can model the data. We can uh, create charts, graphs. Uh, we can do trend analytics. We can do all of that. And to database and Power BI, to both of these, we provided access to the users. Okay. And what what how it helped the users was earlier, earlier the earlier when we had when there was a spike in data or something, they would struggle with their hardware, they would struggle with their uh, you know with the way they would do the analytics. So it was a lot of you know Excel based reporting that they used to do. So with Excel based reporting, the problem was say I am I am having my own version of my report. Say there are two other people in my organization that they are having their own version of Excel. And at some point in time, in the in the uh, during the duration of you know all this reporting and all this sending reports by emails and all of that, after a point in time, we would lose track of what was the actual source of truth. So in enterprise grade, uh, you know, data warehousing or you know data computing solutions or analytic solutions, it is also it is always very important to have a single source of truth. If you have multiple source of truth, then that basically means the data reliability is questionable. So how do I know that you are, your report is more accurate than mine? Or how do I know that my, my, that my report is more accurate than some other person? I do not know that because we are all using our own version of data. We, are, we all have used our own formula. So that is why for enterprise grade reporting, what happened, it's best to have a single serving layer that allows you to get the data in a standardized format. So after, after you have a, a base already built no matter how many reports you create or how many how much analytics you put the basic version of the truth it always remains the same so that is very beneficial and here is a more uh, a little complicated one uh, for the same client that we did and here it actually uh, talks about some of the sources uh, you know that that we were getting the data from right and here you see quite a few components so uh, for some of you, this may lo look a little overwhelming, but trust me, it's not rocket science, okay? So on the left-hand side, we have the on-premises systems, the typical legacy systems, which are the source for the for our cloud solution. And then we, we have a firewall, 
Then we have a gateway. We are getting the data. We are storing it in the storage bar first. Then we are kind of ingesting the data. This is the, these are three layers that I spoke about earlier, the raw layer, the enriched layer, the curated layer. And we decide, you know, how we want to uh, you know, execute uh, the notebooks in Databricks. And in fact, uh, Databricks also has capabilities. You can actually, uh, nowadays with uh, Azure Machine Learning Studio has also come up. So you can also have Azure ML uh, running, over, uh, running over the Azure, uh, Azure platform. And that uh, that provides you humongous capabilities. Actually, I mean, uh, there are, there are, there are packages that you can run, and there are, there are uh, custom models that you can deploy. There are also pre-built models that you can use uh, to model your data. Right. I know there would be a lot of questions, but I would be taking all of those questions. Don't worry. But before that, uh, let me talk a little bit about the cloud career. I, I want to spend some time here. This this is. Uh, for all of you, because all of you today, you are, you are studying in college. Tomorrow you would be joining the organizations, right? Some of you would probably also be my colleagues. I don't know, right? So uh, it's important for all of you to understand um, what, uh, what, is, what is, why we are talking about cloud, why you are, we are having the session in the first place. These are the data that I want you to take a look at. The value of global cloud market was $371.4 billion in 2020, right? That's actual data. And the estimate is by 2025, this value would go to $832.1 billion. Imagine the valuation there, right? Take a look at another data. 94% of all enterprises use cloud services as of today. That's a, that's a very good number, right? And I'm pretty sure that's it, those 6% that are remaining those would also you know, sooner or later move to cloud. They have to, there's no other way. The other uh, data that we have here is 48% of businesses store classified and most important data on the cloud. You know about FBI, right? American Federal Bureau of Investigation. They have their own Azure, uh, Azure government service, which is, uh, which is kind of restricted for them only. So you can imagine. So it's uh, cloud is great for storing classified and most important data. Uh, but of course you have to configure it that way. Again, see three out of four enterprises uh, mention cloud security as a top concern, right? And, and cloud breaches, whatever cloud breaches we see in the news or whatever, it's not about the, you know, it's not about an issue with cloud computing itself. In 88% of cases, it's about human error. So human error contributes to 88% cases of data breaches in cloud computing. So that means only 12% of data breaches are due to cloud in itself, right? And the other uh, very important data is by 2025, 100 zettabytes of data would be stored in the cloud. and and get this idea, one zettabyte is equals to one billion terabyte, okay? So you have those one terabyte hard disk. If you collect one billion of those, that would be one zettabyte. And 100 zettabytes of data would be stored in the cloud by 2025. So that is the scale that we are talking about. And that is why we are having this webinar in the first place. That is the importance of cloud. The most in-demand roles at the moment that we have in the market as of today, uh, some of the roles I have highlighted here, we have cloud architect, we have cloud network engineer, we have cloud automation engineer, we have cloud developer, we have cloud system administrator, we have cloud security manager, cloud product manager, cloud sales manager, all of these roles are very important. And all of this, some of these roles, they kind of overlap with the others a little bit, but those are still very valid. Okay, so cloud architect, someone who is kind of overseeing the whole cloud solution. He kind of has an idea of how each piece fits together in the solution, right? And if something breaks down tomorrow, then he is the person who would probably say that, you know, this piece doesn't look right in that place. Maybe it should, it should be moved around. And then there are cloud developers who come in and actually fixes those pieces together, okay? And then there's a cloud automation engineer who basically looks after the automation. So whatever deployments you see today, uh, uh, there is one very interesting thing that I would like to tell you. Um, 
we use Google, right? When is the last time that you saw that Google went down, that you were not able to search? Can you recall? Let's get some answers here. Do you recall seeing Google down anytime? Have you seen? You have not, right? Yes, and the yes. reason when is- When Michael Jackson died. Sorry? When Michael Jackson died, after that Google server crashed. When Michael Jackson died, but that's not today. That was like uh, quite a while back, right? Michael Jackson died, I think, how many years back? I don't remember yes, actually. Sir. It's been a while. But why why does uh, why does a service like Google doesn't ever go down? There are reasons for that. There are concepts like blue green deployment. So black by blue blue green deployment, what it means is you know we always have two or three uh, running sources, uh, running services, and one is a primary service. The other two are the backup services. And the moment one goes down, the automatically it automatically fails over to the other, right? It automatically happens. So it's not like someone is manually doing anything. There's an automatic failover already in place. The other thing is, for example, a service needs to be updated. There's an upgrade that's needed. So we already have deployment slots for that, for example. So we have a primary deployment slot, say production deployment slot, and we have a non-production deployment slot. We deploy the code to the non-production deployment slot. We check if it's doing well, and then we just quickly swap it. And the swapping of the deployment slots, it's how it hardly takes a fraction of a second. It's totally, you know, transparent to the end user. So even if something goes wrong, when you deploy to the non-production non deployment slot, it, it's very clear at that point in time that this is not going to work. So basically the changes are quickly reverted back. And then, then and there, and when we talk about automation, that's when, you know, you may have heard about DevOps already, right? How many of you have heard about DevOps? Let's see. Okay, you have never heard about DevOps or or, or maybe, okay, you have heard. So Shatopriyo, can you tell me quickly uh, on the chat, what do, what do you understand by DevOps? Okay, let's see what Shatopriyo says. It's like my data in the back end. Uh, no, no, Shatapriya, it's not about that. DevOps is an amalgamation of, uh, uh, let's see what Tita said. A process where developers and operators work with, kind of, kind of, yes, Tash, you're close, you're close. So it's an amalgamation, it's like, it's like one team, right? Earlier, what used to happen was developers used to de develop, testers used to test try and then uh, and then operations used to deploy. It's no more like that, you know, it's one team, okay? And uh, the, the idea is to automate. So right from deploying the code till testing the code and then, you know, fixing it, you know, sending releases, and then you have a code repository, you can, you know, put your code there and then you can, multiple people can work together, right? Uh, it's kind of, it's, it's, an, it's an iterative process, right? And then you have um, agile uh, uh, meetings, uh, you have, you, you check on the process, you, you know, you shift small amounts of completed deliverables, you know, uh, in every sprint, for example. Uh, maybe I am, maybe a lot of this would not make sense to you now, and that's perfectly fine. O over time, you will understand. And one of the most important things for people uh, who are from uh, non-computer science backgrounds here, how many of you are from non-computer science backgrounds? Can I, can I get in and get, uh, get some numbers, please? Just uh, type, uh, just type uh, in the chat, non-IT or non-computer science. Let's get an idea. EC, fine. Anyone else? All right, so let me tell you something. I am from non-computer science background, okay? I, I am from electronics and instrumentation background, and yet I am working in IBM for uh, last 16 years. So it's not like, uh, it's not like that if you're from, if you're not from computer science background, you cannot uh, go into cloud. You can very well, you very well can. can. 
and uh, all these uh, cloud providers, uh, be it Google Cloud, be it AWS Cloud, be it Amazon Cloud, be it IBM Cloud, just just Google, you know the name, go to their website, and check. Uh, most of these cloud providers provide, uh, you know, trial versions um, or you know trial runs, where you get a certain amount of credit, okay, and then they provide you free learning tracks. For Microsoft, I can tell you right away, there's a Microsoft Learn Path that allows you to learn cloud for free, okay? And it also allows you to do a hands-on for free. It provides you trial, okay? You, you get around uh, some dollars uh, that you can use over a month of time. And even after that, if you have interest, you can go for a pay-as-you-go uh, pay model and you can you know, uh, you can do your own thing. You can do your own stuff. You can build stuff. Just be very careful in the pay as you go model. You would require a credit card. And, uh, yeah, and I would not suggest any of you to do that unless, uh, you know, unless you really want to do it, because I don't want you to like uh, you know, get up one fine morning and see that, you know, you have uh, $5,000 of uh, amount that you need to pay. So be very mindful of that, but trial versions definitely you can use. Okay, and yeah, and uh, someone said Redmi Nine Power. Okay, I don't know who he is, but he said that Google also provides Saturday hands-on practice. Yes, very correct, Redmi. Very correct. All right, so that was about the cloud career. I hope I have uh, I have some enthusiasm from all of you, and trust me, this is the future. Cloud is the future. I mean, we can talk about all of it. And I was receiving some uh, some uh, questions the other day. Some some of you may have uh, provided some questions in advance. And one of the question was, which technology do I need to learn to learn cloud? Cloud is technology agnostic, my friend, first of all. You can, no matter which uh, language or which, uh, you know, uh, which uh, program you are comfortable with, you know, everything runs on cloud. I mean, uh, you can just, uh, it's a very... Uh, flexible that way. Any cloud, if you go, you can code in Python, you can code in C, you can code in Node.js, you can code in Java. Uh, it doesn't matter really. There is more than just programming. Cloud is um, cloud is more than just programming. There's a lot of things that are there. Uh, okay, and and the other thing is uh, with cloud, there are also many no code solutions or no code or low code solutions that have come in place. Uh, you may have heard about Microsoft Power Platform, right? So Microsoft Power Platform is a great, you know, no code or low code solution. You can build chatbots, you can build, um, you can build websites, you can build uh, mobile apps, you can build Canvas apps on mobile. Uh, you can you can create flows. You can create very intelligent flows. For example. Uh, if I have an email coming in, okay, for example, my server goes down, okay, and, and it's a Sunday. I have no way, I'm not logging into my laptop, right? But then I, will, I can schedule a flow that would allow me to get an alert via SMS as well as email whenever the server goes down, okay? That's very much possible. So, so that, is the, that is the benefit of, uh, of uh, having the solutions. So, so I have, I have, I think um, I could, I could add some value to this session. I'm hoping now I like to move to question answer sessions and see what questions do you have. Uh, let's have some questions, guys. So I look at the chat window now, and uh... so uh, thank you, Mr. Chiranji Mojundar, for uh, enlightening us uh, with your talk. Now I will request uh, to the students for asking any question that come in your mind with, uh, after this uh, remarkable speech. So please ask any question that come in your mind. Okay, uh, Siddharth Sharma, he is asking what is trend analytics? Where did you hear about trend analytics, Siddharth? May I know? Let me, let me first ask you this. Where did you hear about trend analytics? Siddhant, you can uh, unmute yourself and uh, even you can talk, I think. Yes, sir. In this lecture only, sir. You only said at the lecture. 
about uh, trend analytics. Ah, I see it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so trend analytics is nothing but capturing the trend from the data. For example, I have five years of data uh, for my business and it, and you know, the, I have had losses. I have had gains. I have had, you know, uh, business downtime and all of that. So how do I know if there is a, if there is a correlation between say a peak season and my business profit? There probably is, but how do I know? How do I know which category of people are most likely to purchase my products, right? Or which age group is most likely to purchase my products? How do I know which age group of people are hitting my website between on, on the weekends, right? So all of this data is very important. You may have heard about Google Analytics, right? Google Analytics yes. uh, is, is a classic service that allows you to uh, see how your website is being utilized by the people, by the visitors. Which areas of your website are receiving the maximum clicks? Which, uh, which charts are getting the maximum downloads? All of those you can get. I hope it was clear, right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. No problem. Okay, one question that I have is, uh, let me see. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for um, lots of questions I am seeing. Mm. One, someone said, I am a fourth year EC. Uh, I'm a fourth year student uh, studying in EC. How do I, uh, how do I, uh, how do I learn cloud? That was the question, right? So, um, uh, first of all, uh, no matter which year you are. I have seen people on LinkedIn posting about their achievements in cloud and those people are merely school students. Trust me. Yeah, they have got themselves certified in Microsoft Cloud. They are school students and you are in fourth year college, right? So if they are able to do it, I'm pretty sure you would be able to do it as well. And it's very simple. As I mentioned, you just go into any of the any of the cloud providers uh, websites, just Google, Google cloud, just Google IBM cloud, just Google, you know, Microsoft Azure. And there you will see a big banner that would tell you that, you know, uh, we have this trial version. You can just get the trial version. You can start playing with the cloud. You can start checking this out. And that, that and in most cases, they will also give you a free, uh, you know, some amount in your, in your kitty that you can play with. And they won't charge you. If you are in the trial, if you're using the trial version, they won't charge you unless you, you know, reach the limit. And even after you reach the limit, they would usually just cancel the subscription. That's it. So you are pretty safe. I mean, it doesn't hurt you at all. What is the public cloud? Okay, a public cloud is where. Uh, okay, let me let me enlarge my chat window a little bit. Okay. So uh, what is a public cloud? So public cloud is uh, nothing but a cloud where it is shared between multiple organizations. So uh, uh, example is, as I mentioned, Google Drive. Google Drive is a public cloud. So I'm giving, I'm being given a 15 GB space. All of you are probably being given 15 GB space, right? But it's uh, shared. It's not like uh, I can see what you are storing in your Google Drive. No, I cannot do that. Google is very secure that way. But at the back end, it's again a single cloud. Maybe they have uh, petabytes of uh, space in their drive and they have just segmented 15 GB of spaces for all the email accounts that are there, okay, that are using the free tier that they have, right? Uh, we know online apps. Um, okay. Uh, Learning one cloud service provider is enough to move uh, into the field of cloud computing? Absolutely, Koshik. Learning one cloud service provider well is enough. Don't uh, don't try to move into multiple, you know, don't be a jack of all trades. Learn one cloud very well. And then if you have time, if you have the tenacity, then go for the others. Don't go, don't go like, you know, doing fundamental certifications on the clouds. That doesn't help actually. Uh, I mean, it's good for theoretical knowledge, but, but for all practical purposes, I would strongly recommend that you uh, that you uh, gain in-depth knowledge in one cloud platform and actually cloud platforms are pretty similar, you know, concept wise. So whatever concepts I spoke about here, those concepts are relevant for all cloud providers. It's not like just for Microsoft Azure. It's for, it's relevant for Google Cloud as well. 
just the terminology is differ, differs, right? For example, in Azure, I would give you an example. I would, uh, in, in, in Azure, you have uh, function apps, right? In, in AWS, the same thing is called Lambda function. Okay. And there, there is some other terminology in Google Cloud or in IBM Cloud. Okay. It's just like that. Uh, so conceptually, uh, things are pretty similar. And that's very natural as well because all clouds are computers of each other. If I'm a cloud provider, I'm, I'm inventing a new service today and that is getting a lot of traction from clients. What will my computers do? They will see that, okay, this guy is uh, kind of has come up with a new service that is getting, getting a lot of cash. Let us also create something similar, right? They would also brand name it and they will also release it to the market. It's very natural. So whatever cloud providers you have, in, uh, in most cases, you would have competing services. So maybe the names are slightly different, the functionalities are slightly different, but overall the things would be the same. Uh, uh, sir, how to provide uh, on-demand functionality in cloud computing? Uh, what do you mean by on-demand functionality, Rajin? Can you please clarify? I didn't understand. Okay, okay. I think I get your question. I think I get your question. So, see, uh, whenever we go into any cloud provider, they, they provide services, right? There are lots of services that are available. Suppose you need a storage. They have multiple storage services that are available. You can pick and choose what storage service you need. Then, for example, you need a computing service. There are multiple computing services that are available. You pick and choose what computing service you need, right? And it's like a catalog of resources that are there, okay? And each, and each resource, of course, it comes with its own cost of deployment. It, uh, it comes with its own cost of usage as well, okay? So uh, it's very easy, actually. So when I log into the cloud, for example, uh, I have this catalog, a new project comes in and we get the requirements, we do the, uh, we understand the requirements, we uh, jot down the requirements document, uh, we get it validated by the user and then we come to the solution architecture. We try to see, you know, what all components, what all services will be needed so that we can meet these requirements. And then we do an estimate, right? We do an estimate that, you know, how much will this cost for this particular client? And then we get the cost approved as well, right? And then we, once we have the architecture approved, once it goes to the technical architecture review board meetings, we start deploying the services one by one as we build the solution. Okay, so that's how it happens. Okay, sir, thank you so much. And uh, on more things, please uh, tell me about the hot, um, what are the major uh, difference between hybrid cl uh, cloud computing and public cloud computing? Okay. Hybrid cloud is, as I mentioned, suppose uh, I am an old organization. I had the servers and server rooms and server racks and all of that, right? Uh, I have yes. my own hardware, okay? Yes, sir. And that hardware is kind of aging. I want to move to the cloud, but I cannot throw my server away, right? Because it still has lots of data. It still has lots of applications that are running on top of it. But I still want to scale it, okay? So what I would need to do is I would need to have a methodology where I can systematically upgrade my system. So I start leveraging the cloud. For example, uh, maybe I move one or two applications from my on-premise systems, which are very critical, to we move, I move it to the cloud and I leave the rest of it in the on-premises. So I only pay for the two applications that are in the cloud, right? I only pay, yes. for, the, uh, only, I only pay for them. And rest, I keep it, you know, and then I have a, a, a virtual network integration between the on-premise systems and this, uh, and this public and this public cloud. And I have everything, you know, everything together. So that's what is a classic example of hybrid cloud. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, all right. Let me see. There are lots of questions, actually. Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, uh, Tanmay Chaudhary, let's see. Uh, I think today a lot of people consider security of their data as a priority, yet most of the major uh, cloud service providers like GDI, uh, they don't have encryption to secure the data. Mm. Tanmay, uh, interesting question. Why is data security not the norm when it comes to cloud services? Um, data security is definitely there, Tanmoy. I won't say that data security isn't there. Uh, how many times have you seen that a Google Drive or Dropbox or OneDrive has been hacked? Have you heard this recently? I'm not saying that it's not it's impossible, but have you heard recently of uh, you know Google Drive or Dropbox or OneDrive being hacked? Tanmoy? No, sir. <clears throat> okay. 
so it, it doesn't happen that way so a basic layer of security is always there but you know the the what we say in bengali joto gur toto mishti right so the so the the more you spend uh, on security the more secure your data will be but it's not like these are unsecure it's not unsecure by any means there is always a layer of security that is there okay okay sir. but my question was that they do not have any no knowledge encryption like or other alternatives like p cloud or mega they do have no knowledge encryption compared to that this um, google just uh, cloud so you are talking about data encryption right yes sir so data encryption what i can talk about azure is data encryption is provided by default if you go into azure public cloud okay so uh, i'm not very sure about google drive i need to check once right uh, what kind of encryption they provide but data encryption azure is provided by default these days uh, it it comes basically now we can now you can have encryption keys you can have uh, storage encryption keys and uh, system managed encryption keys and all of that 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 would be a kind of a higher level service but basic data encryption is uh, there by default okay okay sir uh, umar farooq is asking cloud computing and mobile computing is same sir um what do you mean by mobile computing i didn't understand uh, by the way i think uh, i think we are uh, we are reaching the end of time is it uh, uh, dear faculty members please could you confirm yes yes uh, yes uh, actually uh, uh, we have uh, the time is uh, already we are running out of time okay uh, but anyway uh, Still, I, I can see that there are a lot of students uh, who are asking questions. That's a very good thing. Um, no, I, I have a question. I am yes, from sir. physics department. I am from physics department, teacher of physics. Hello, Chiranjeev. Yes, yes, tell me, sir. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. During using the cloud of any provider, is it affect the speed of computation of the original server? uh i didn't i didn't quite follow the question uh, what do you mean uh, do you mean to say that uh, no, if i am no, logged in from so anyone yeah. is using some cloud provider uh, cloud of any provider that is export import data is going on mm -hmm. so i'm and some something is uh, in the original server uh, some computation is going on is it affect the export import process uh, is it affect the speed of the computation yeah if it's if it's about the same data say uh, you are exporting your data from a system and that same data you are also using for analytical purposes or something then if there is a, if, uh, then uh, if, then if it's the same resource that is being exported and also being analyzed then definitely it would be slower yeah okay okay yeah um i i also have a question can i ask hello yes please go ahead uh i am a faculty of ec department uh, i have a question like uh, you told there are three types of uh, things like public private and uh, hybrid cloud computing yeah. yes. now which which one can you please tell me which one would be the fastest among these three uh all all of these would be fast all of this would be fast so uh, it's difficult to segregate like that right because uh, ultimately all of this uh, ultimately depends on what resource you choose in the cloud Okay. okay but uh, but all of this uh, all of these three cloud providers can be very uh, cloud uh, uh, deployment models can be very fast actually uh, that's not and, a, that's not a problem yeah okay thank you and uh, one more thing like which one will be the safe like according to security purpose which one will be the safest one like my data will be safe and secure it should not be lost which private, one private cloud would be the safest one okay okay thank you so much yeah okay so uh, i hope the students have got all the uh, answers of their question now i hope uh, you can start with your cloud framework as a registered anyway so now we can uh, I, i request uh, professor tanmay pal sir for sharing uh, the appreciation memento to our honorable speaker mr kiranjit mulumdar tanmay uh, tanmay sir yes uh, thank you uh, thank you obisek bokshi sir uh, first of all uh, once again i would like to uh, thank uh, mr chiranjeev mojumdar uh, 
you can find out some uh, time for us from your busy schedule and to be our guest speaker thanks thanks again sir and thanks to you sir for your uh, for your enlightening words and the session was very uh, informative and interactive also and uh, thanks to you sir uh, i think the all the participants and the students uh, will get inspired and uh, they are motivated and i hope they have got enough idea about the basics of cloud from the trained right now it is going on in the industry so I, i would like to please allow me the share options sure yes so this is a small token of appreciation from the iic bit is it visible sir thank you so much thank you so much i'm i'm very glad to be here amongst all of you uh, thank you so much yeah yeah thank you sir thank you so we will uh, we'll share this uh, certificate with you in an email thanks to you sure sure thank you so much thank you so what to you obisek sir so we are uh, almost at the end of the session for today now i request professor dr tanmoy uh, tapon pal sir Uh, for giving the vote of thanks on behalf of the entire IIC team of Bengal Institute of Technology, <laughs> Professor Tapan Bal sir. Thank you, Vishak Bokshi, uh, yes, thank for uh, for provide me to thanks. Uh, so I want to uh, thanks uh, our our principal sir, uh, Dr. N. C. Ghosh, for their. for her uh, for his constant uh, support for different kind of uh, activity that is driven by the iic bit i also thanks professor orpita chakraborty uh, president of uh, iic uh, professor tanmoy pal convener and all the coordinators of uh, different uh, and members of different activities like iic mic sda innovation cell incubation cells and i also thanks the speaker that uh, to this speaker mr chiranjeet mojundar senior technical specialist ibm consultancy for his very informative and i also uh, the students are also enthusiastic about they are uh, gathering the knowledge about the cloud computing and i also thanks uh, again to the speaker i want to thanks uh, sda coordinated nators uh, professor shubhan nandi and other team members professor tipti mojundar professor dr shubhroto chakraborty professor doipan chakraborty professor obishek bokshi and dr shourab kanti shorkar for their effort constant effort for doing this kind of series of uh, webinars and i also thanks to all the student who are participating in this uh, webinar especially those uh, that gives different kind of feedback about uh, the cloud computing and asking the speaker for about their Uh, different kind of questions and uh, i think again i thanks to mr chiranjeet mojundar for his valuable speech about cloud computing thanks to all over to abhishek so uh, now before we uh, end the webinar i request professor uh, doipayan chakraborty for sharing the feedback form in the chat box and uh, all the students are requested to fill up the form to get the certificate of attending the webinar doipan please share your uh, share the feedback the link yes i have shared <laughs> so we are at the end of the webinar
So uh, we all are uh, still bound basically with this uh, very beautiful technical session, and hope all the audiences have uh, received enough knowledge or uh, a strong concept about the cloud computing and clear their uh, doubts. I think. And thank you all for your uh, presence throughout the session and active uh, participation. Uh, and uh, uh, now I uh, officially want to uh, close this session and end the recording. And please uh, be uh, stay tuned with us, and we will uh, in future uh, we'll conduct more uh, kind of uh, this kind of seminar or webinar uh, to this platform. So thank you all. Thank you for your patience, audiences. Thank you, speaker. Thank you, Chiranjit Mojumdar. Thank you all.